A brutal robbery, a deadly stalker, the rich and famous aren't immune to tragedy. Some celebrities have suffered the murder of a parent, the sort of traumatic loss that alters one's life forever. Dylan McDermott is known for his role as Ben Harmon in the American Horror Story franchise, but in real life, the actor suffered true horror. In 1967, his mother's boyfriend had kicked five-year-old Dylan out of his Waterbury, Connecticut home. As he stood outside, Dylan heard a gunshot. The next time he saw his mom, her body was being carried out on a gurney. Diane McDermott's boyfriend, John Sponza, claimed that she died by suicide. The police failed to look at any other evidence other than what John Sponza provided them. In 2011, Dylan contacted the Waterbury police with some questions. Police Superintendent Michael Gugliotti told the Republican American, Mr. McDermott said, in order for me to survive and to get where I am today, I needed to bury that moment in my life deep within myself. He said it wasn't until recently that I've come to the point in my life where I'm able to begin to process all of this. The case was reopened, and this time a medical examiner determined a gun had been held to Diane's head. They were going to change the cause of death from accidental or self-inflicted to murder. There was enough new evidence against Sponza to charge him, but he had been killed in 1972. With six NBA titles, Michael Jordan is arguably the greatest basketball player of all time. But he temporarily retired from the game in 1993, the year his father, James Jordan, was shot and killed. According to the Los Angeles Times, 57-year-old James had been missing for three weeks when his body was discovered in a creek in South Carolina. His red Lexus 400 was recovered by police two days later. The car had been destroyed, parts were missing, and it no longer had a license plate. Daniel Andre Green and Larry Martin Demery, the two teenagers charged with the crime, reportedly shot James as he slept in his car. They didn't realize whom they killed until they rummaged through his belongings. According to Robeson County District Attorney Johnson Britt, Green opened James's wallet, then turned to Demery and said, I believe we killed Michael Jordan's dad. A few months after his father's murder, Jordan talked about it with Oprah Winfrey. When she asked him if he'd ever want to ask the killers why they did it, Jordan replied, No, because I don't want to know. You don't? No. Because it probably would hurt me even more just to know their reasons. On October 24th, 2008, Jennifer Hudson's sister Julia returned to the family's Chicago home to find her mother, 57-year-old Darnell Donerson, and brother, 29-year-old Jason Hudson, had been shot and killed. Her son, 7-year-old Julian King, was missing. Three days later, Julian was found in the back of an abandoned SUV. He'd been shot in the head. In 2012, Julia's estranged husband, William Balfour, was convicted of all three murders and sentenced to life in prison. In a 2015 interview with Glamour, the American Idol star opened up about her pain. She said, It's frustrating as hell to me to have somebody who ain't lost nothing try to talk to me about it. I want to say, don't even bother because you know nothing. But you never know how much you can get through until you're going through it. You're confused. Your yeah. mind is confused. Your feelings are confused. You don't know where to start. She admitted that giving birth to her son David a year after the murders helped her cope. Hudson explained, I went from being an aunt, having a mom, and being a child, to not having a mom, becoming a mom, and raising my own child. I tell David all the time, you saved my life. When guitarist Dave Navarro, who played in iconic 90s bands such as Jane's Addiction and the Red Hot Chili Peppers, was 15 years old, his mother, 41-year-old Constance Connie Navarro, and her friend Sue Jory were shot and killed by Constance's ex-boyfriend, John Riccardi after he broke into her Los Angeles apartment on March 3rd, 1983. Fortunately, Dave was visiting his father at the time of the murders. It was actually a, a miracle that I wasn't home because I think that obviously if I was home that night, uh, it would have gotten me too. He told the Daily Mail, so I really do believe that that's some sort of divine intervention that I can't explain. Riccardi was finally located after he appeared on America's Most Wanted in 1991. Dave opened up about the ordeal in a 2015 documentary called Morning Sun, directed by his close pal Todd Newman. In an interview with Huffington Post about the film, Navarro said, The truth is, there were times when I wasn't sure if I wanted to tell it. 
but I think on a therapeutic level, it was worth seeing through. It's almost been a rebirth of my relationship with her, in the light. Shaped by those brutal murders, Dave now uses his platform to raise awareness about domestic violence. Musician and producer Sean Lennon, son of Beatles legend John Lennon, was born on October 9, 1975, his father's 35th birthday. Sadly, father and son didn't have much time together. A man by the name of Mark David Chapman shot the former Beatle four times on December 8, 1980, outside the family's apartment building in Manhattan. According to CNN, Chapman idolized John, but claimed he became angry when his hero told the Evening Standard that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus during a 1966 interview. In a CNN interview from prison three years after the murder, Chapman recalled, I stepped off the curb, walked, turned, I took the gun, and just boom, 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 boom. Chapman was denied parole for the 10th time in 2018. In a 1998 interview with Rolling Stone, Sean reflected on life without his father, saying, People ask me, do you feel like he's still around? And he is, man. He's alive in his music, in my life. Sometimes I walk into a store and hear him singing. Instant Karma is playing, and I feel like that's him talking to me. Malcolm X was a religious leader and fierce advocate for civil rights. Delve into his childhood, and it's easy to understand why. His father, Earl Little, was a preacher and civil rights activist who was the frequent target of white supremacists. Malcolm is quoted in Alex Haley's The Autobiography of Malcolm X, saying, When my mother was pregnant with me, a party of hooded Ku Klux Klan riders galloped up to our home, brandishing their shotguns and rifles. They shouted for my father to come out. Little moved the family from Omaha to Wisconsin to Michigan in hopes of keeping them safe, but tragedy still followed. In 1931, Little's body was found on streetcar tracks. His loved ones believed he was murdered by white supremacists, but the police ruled the death an accident. This invalidated Little's life insurance policy, causing financial struggle for the grieving family. Malcolm's mother was committed to a mental institute after her husband's death. As a result, Malcolm and his siblings were separated and placed in foster care. Malcolm X's life was also cut short. Malcolm knew he was going to die by someone's hands. He was assassinated in front of his pregnant wife and children on February 21, 1965, during a speaking engagement in New York. According to the Washington Post, Days before his death, Malcolm X assured reporters, I live like a man who is dead already. I have no fear whatsoever of anybody or anything. In 1986, Dallas star Patrick Duffy was at the height of his fame when his parents, Terrence and Marie Duffy, were brutally gunned down during a robbery in the Montana bar they owned. The perpetrators, Sean Wentz and Kenneth Miller, were sentenced to 75 years in prison, but Miller was granted parole in 2007 after Wentz confessed to being the gunman. Although Patrick supported his sister's petition to keep their parents' killers behind bars, he credited his Buddhist faith with his ability to cope with Miller's freedom. He told OK Magazine, My point of view is that he's already been punished. You know, whether he's in prison or out of prison, I was stunned that my reaction included compassion for them. I am not a cold and uncaring person, so why am I not emotionally devastated by this? I realize that by now, in all probability, even if they had not been killed, they would be dead. All parents die. Actor Kelsey Grammer, who first rose to fame on the classic sitcom Cheers, has endured a number of heartbreaking tragedies throughout his life. Grammer's father, Frank Allen Grammer, was fatally shot in 1968, when the future star was just 13. In 1975, the Grammer family faced another tragedy when Kelsey's sister Karen was sexually assaulted and murdered. Decades later, the actor fought for justice for his sister when her killer Freddie Glenn was up for parole. In a letter to the parole board, Grammer wrote, I miss her in my bones. I was her big brother. I was supposed to protect her. I could not. It very nearly destroyed me. You know, the last decade has been spent going back to Colorado Springs to uh, ask the parole board to keep them in jail. The actor went on to explain his feelings of guilt to Vanity Fair, saying, it's not rational, but it happens anyway. I know a lot of people who have lost their siblings and blame themselves. When asked what he's learned from these tragedies, Grammer responded, Every one of us is going to experience some terrible loss. I just got a big dose. I think you come to look at it as part of life. 
Former Glee star Jake Zyrus, who's been open about his journey coming out as a transgender man, lost his father, Ricky Pempenko, in 2011. Pempenko was stabbed to death by Angel Capilli Jr. after an altercation outside a store in the Philippines. Capilli later turned himself in and claimed that he killed Ricky in self-defense. In an interview with ABS-CBN Television, Interior Secretary Jesse Robredo said, He was claiming that he was already backing away, but then the victim continued to attack him, so he got a screwdriver and he stabbed Mr. Pempenko. We will compare the account of witnesses with the account of the suspect. Zyrus took to Twitter to address the tragedy, writing, I loved him, and I will still love him. He's still my dad after all. Pempenko and Zyrus had a complicated relationship. In an earlier interview on The Oprah Winfrey Show, Zyrus had revealed that he and his mother once fled from Pempenko. He said, My dad was about to shoot my mom, and I couldn't do anything. We left my dad, and after that, I never saw him, and I don't want to see him. I'm just singing now for my mom. I didn't help her before. That's why I want to help her now. In 1949, when future Allman Brothers band musicians Dwayne and Greg Allman were just toddlers, their father, Army Lieutenant Willis Turner Allman, was murdered. He was fatally shot by a hitchhiker he and another officer had picked up in Norfolk, Virginia. Sadly, the Allman Brothers Band later experienced another tragedy, the 1971 death of lead guitarist Dwayne at 24 in a motorcycle accident. In 2017, younger brother Greg died of liver cancer at age 69. Allman had been diagnosed with hepatitis C in 1999 and received a liver transplant in 2010. Greg's manager and friend, Michael Lehman, shared a heartfelt statement on Allman's website following the legendary musician's death. He wrote, I have lost a dear friend, and the world has lost a brilliant pioneer in music. He was a kind and gentle soul with the best laugh I ever heard. His love for his family and bandmates was passionate, as was the love he had for his extraordinary fans. Greg was an incredible partner and an even better friend. We will all miss him. If you or someone you know is dealing with domestic abuse, you can call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. You can also find more information, resources, and support at their website.